All right, welcome back. Just a reminder, Justice Stephen Breyer says his retirement from the Supreme Court will take effect tomorrow. The 83-year-old judge will be replaced by Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson. Breyer's announcement comes as the high court gets ready to release its final decisions of the term tomorrow. That includes the justices' rulings on the Trump era Remain in Mexico policy. Also, a case that pits the state of West Virginia against the EPA could drastically curtail the EPA's authority uh, and also impact the Democrats' green energy agenda. Also, the Pentagon's woke strategy is fueling a recruiting crisis. We'll have more evidence that our military brass are politicizing uh, their objectives over what our troops really need. That might be affecting this recruiting crisis. Again, Air Force General Blaine Holt will be back with us to give us his analysis. Also, the investigation continues into the most deadly human trafficking attempt in our nation's history. This, as we learned this afternoon, the death toll has now risen to at least 53 people. That includes five kids who died after they were abandoned in a scorching hot trailer down in San Antonio, Texas. Right now, officials had potential uh, identifications on 37 of the victims as of this morning. We're still pending, uh, we're still waiting for more information from the authorities. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome in Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who's with us now. General, great to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, yesterday, President Biden released a written statement in response to this awful, awful incident. He also accused Governor Greg Abbott of, quote, political grandstanding after Abbott blamed President Biden's open door policies on these migrants' deaths. You know, President Biden refuses to accept responsibility for anything remotely related to the crisis at our southern border. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, literally the president on day one of, of his administration started inviting people to come across the border. And the, the foreseeable results are exactly what happened in San Antonio with over 50 people dying. It's gonna happen again. The Biden administration knows it's gonna happen again. They know that fentanyl overdoses are up 30%. They know more people are gonna die, more Americans are gonna die, more immigrants are gonna die, that the cartels are gonna make billions. And they're willing to trade all of that to get more people in this country. Yeah, if it's becoming painfully obvious to everyone, including a lot of members of just not even the American mainstream press, but the international press, that having a wide open border is just bad for business. Here's the BBC's Caddy Kay. Yeah, and it's really bad at the moment. I was down in, in Arizona recently and everybody is talking about the situation and, and and many actually talking about the tragedy of the situation of women getting raped as they come across, of children getting separated from their parents, of children getting raped as they come across, of the people smugglers really taking advantage of what is seen as an open door policy. You know, so that's Caddy Kay, a BBC journalist on MSNBC. You know, we also reported that this death toll, 53, it's the worst incident of this since they've been keeping track of this stuff. And of course, it happens on President Biden's watch. Well, you know, it's amazing. We just had this terrible shooting in Uvalde, and the president uh, obviously spent a lot of time and focused on that and talked about it. And one is legislation. And here we have even more people dying, and the president dismisses it as the cartel's problem, when in reality, he could stop this tomorrow or begin to stop it tomorrow if he'd actually enforce federal law. He has no interest in that. He's willing to let these people go and more in the future will die because of ex exactly this policy. Now, we're also expected to learn more. Uh, this ruling from the Supreme Court is going to come down on the Remain in Mexico policy. I know it's hard to predict these things, General, but do you have any insight on what's going to happen with this and how uh, if it is uh, returned, if it is, if the judges do rule in favor of the Remain in Mexico policy, how will that impact the current border crisis? Yeah, look, I'm hopeful. I was there for the argument. Uh, I, I feel like we made the right arguments. I mean, it's pretty clear that the law is a shall, which is if, if somebody's coming across and claiming asylum, the federal government is supposed to deport them or hold them in detainment until they're hearing. That's a shall. Uh, I heard interesting arguments being made that it was because there's not enough facilities that they have no choice but to let people go. But the reality is when you invite people to come, you're going to have more people than Congress expected. So yeah, I'm hopeful because this is a pretty significant case for what happens at the border. This is how the Trump administration, one of the main reasons that Trump was able to get the numbers down is enforcing this federal law, because this is one of the biggest loopholes we have where you just come to Border Patrol and claim asylum, and then suddenly you get transported around the country. So if we can eliminate this, it is a huge number of people that are using this loophole. Well, let's talk a little bit, too, about the fallout from the Dobbs decision from the Supreme Court. A judge in Harris County, Texas, ruled in favor 
of pro-abortion groups and block the state's pro-life laws from taking effect. Now, you say they will not win this fight in the long run, but tell us about what's going on in Texas now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the, the legislature passed more recent legislation, the trigger law, the, the, the heartbeat bill, and in each of those pieces of legislation, they 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 noted that there was existing law still in place. It was not repealed. So this judge made a political decision to, to temporarily restrain uh, these these uh, laws that have been in effect for a long time. But the reality is those laws are still in effect. They've never been repealed. The legislature specifically passed legislation and said that these, these past laws are still in effect. So this judge is just making an individual decision, uh, and she doesn't have the right to do that. So if, if, she, if she maintains this position, we have, a, we have another hearing coming up in a week or two. If she maintains this position, we'll appeal it, and in the end, she'll be overturned. And ultimately, what do you think happens with the Texas heartbeat abortion ban? It stays in place. There's no doubt in my mind. The, the Supreme Court ruled in the Dobbs case. They also ruled in the heartbeat case. Both cases have been at the U.S. Supreme Court. And our laws, our heartbeat bill and our trigger law are, are constitutional and are, are staying in place. And, and the, the people actually get to have a voice in this instead of nine judges telling us, you know, what we're supposed to do about these issues. This is a constitutional issue. And the, the issue is, do states have a right to control this? And the, and the reality is, yes, they did for over 200 years. And uh, a seven person, seven, seven members of the Supreme Court decided that no longer were, was it going to be elected officials, that they were going to decide. And they did a really poor job, and I think the, the Supreme Court acknowledged that and went back to the way it was supposed to be, which is it's supposed to be elected representatives, and people get to vote with their feet now. If they don't like a state and their abortion laws, they can leave or they can, they can move. You know, this is going to be an issue that uh, guys like Beto O'Rourke, who's running for governor, he thinks this is a winning issue for Democrats. He also thinks the Supreme Court's decision on that New York concealed carry case is a, is a win for Democrats as well. Uh, does he understand the voters of Texas? Look, uh, bring it on. Uh, Wendy Davis, eight years ago, ran on the abortion issue. She made a big show of it in the Texas Senate. I was there when she made the big show, and she thought she was going to win on the abortion issue. And, you know, the reality is it wasn't a winner. A lot of uh, uh, pro, pro-life pro Catholics and a lot of uh, pro-life Hispanics uh, voted for the Republican ticket, and she lost overwhelmingly. So, you know, let Beto run on the abortion issue, killing babies. Uh, I don't think it's going to be successful in Texas, nor do I think— running against the Second Amendment is going to help uh, Beto O'Rourke. He's very unwise if those are the two issues that he's, he's, he's counting on to win Texas. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the tide already start to turn in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. That started a couple years ago. We've seen the red wave progressively get bigger down in Texas. And the, these, these family value issues, that's one of the things that's, you know, I think alienating a lot of Democratic voters. They don't feel like they're represented. Um, especially the Hispanic voters in Texas, they were taken for granted by Democrats for a long time, and we're starting to see the effects of that now. Attorney General from Texas, Ken Paxton, great to talk to you as always. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest-growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.